The offset load and stance dumbbell deadlift is a nice way to train a, a you know posterior chain of muscles, the glutes and the hamstrings, booty builder, some might say. Uh, but it's it's kind of like, I wouldn't do this one with a barbell. If you have a barbell, I would probably do a Jefferson deadlift where you're kind of straddling the weight. Uh, but if you only have dumbbells available to you, this is actually a really good option for loading up your deadlift. So we're going to start with an offset load. If you're using a heavy weight, I would maybe offset 20 pounds between the two. And if you're using a lighter weight, maybe 50 or lower, I would offset maybe only 10 pounds between the two. You're going to set them up elevated, usually on a bench or chair like this. And you're going to do a really good RDL to pick them up. And then we're going to get set. We're going to go for the stance, offset load, we got check. Offset stance, we're going to go one foot behind the other one, just about halfway through the other foot, okay? I don't want, it's not a split stance. It's not a staggered stance. There's nothing too uh, extra about this, right? It's very subtle in the offset nature of it. Uh, so for here. We're not doing an RDL, but we are going to start from the top. Generally with dumbbells, I don't want to pick them up from the ground unless I've elevated them appropriately because to get the full motion, the full uh, mobility to get all the way down there, I have to round my back to do that. And you're usually using pretty heavy weights for this. You don't want to load uh, your back with really heavy weights like that. So we're going to start from the top. We're going to go nice and tall through the top of the head. You're going to hinge. And first, this is going to look like the offset stance RDL. We're going to keep most of the weight on this back leg. And then once we get to the point where we can't hinge anymore, then we can bend the knees slightly. Keep pushing the butt back behind you. And when you run out of motion, when you feel like you really need to start squatting to get any lower, I like to stop where a barbell would be and just kind of use that as my guide. Though I've been lifting for a while, so I kind of know where the barbell would be. If you don't, go mid shin, let's say. Uh, okay, so we'll walk through all that again. So nice and tall, weight is on the trailing leg, a little bit of weight on the front leg, but most of it's on the trailing leg. You're going to push the butt backward until it runs out of motion, and then you're going to bend the knees to go a little lower, and then you're going to just reverse it. So I start straightening the knees, and then when I get to the about knee level with the weight, I'm going to drive the hips forward, squeeze the butt. We're emphasizing this trailing leg, so you should feel a lot in the hamstring and in the glute the whole time. If you start to feel a lot in the front leg, just try to shift more weight to the back leg. Uh, biggest mistakes on this one is just not getting the hinge kind of timing right. If you're getting down there and you're bending your knees too soon, you're probably going to feel your low back too much. Or, or, you know, conversely, if you're not bending them enough, you're also going to feel your low back. <laughs> so my favorite cue for this one is just feel it in the glutes and hamstrings. Feel like your legs are doing the work, okay? Make sure your legs are doing the work. More burn will be better for this one. So I'll just do a couple reps like this. And then once you get all on one side, I would usually balance this one out. Just like that. Make sure your legs are doing the work. Um, and this will be a good one for you to load glutes and hamstrings. 